We're now going to move on to our next talk by Ursin Hussein. Ursin is a lecturer in ancient history at Swansea University. Um, Ursin, if you want to share your screen while I introduce you, please. Now, Ursin's research primarily focuses on the ancient history and material culture of Cyprus. Her first monograph, Revaluing Roman Cyprus, Local Identity on an Island in Antiquity, was published with Oxford University Press in 2021. This work championed Cyprus as a rich and rewarding Roman province to study on account of its dynamic culture and society under Roman rule and its participation in the wider empire, but particularly because of the way its cities and their inhabitants maintained and articulated their deep-rooted cultural ties with multiple landscapes across the Mediterranean. Ursin continues to explore interpretations of Cyprus as a real and imagined landscape and the history of Cypriot artifacts and their display in museums and responses to Cyprus in visual art are crucial aspects of her research on receptions of the island's history. Ursin is also developing expertise in the cultural value of metals in antiquity, notably copper, a metal synonymous with Cypriot identity, as well as the legacies of industrial mining sites as heritage landscape. Ursin is now going to talk about her collaborative work, Launch of the Egypt and its Neighbours display. Thank you for that introduction, Wendy. I hope you can all hear me and see my screen clearly now. Yes, we can. Um, it really is an honour to be part of this Oh, excellent, good. <laughs> it really is an honour to be part of this three-day event that reflects upon the history of the Welcome Collection and really celebrates the dynamic work that the Egypt Centre and its various partners do together and independently to engage so many with these artefacts. Working with the Egypt Centre um, to develop research, teaching and public engagement initiatives has really been a joyful aspect of you know, my work here at Swansea University. And it really does feel good after such a challenging 18 months to be finally launching its, its latest installation as part of these conference proceedings. The artifacts that you can see faintly in the background of this sl slide are in the display and offer a glimpse of some of the new arrangements of classical artifacts in the installation itself. They also carry great meaning to me as they are from ancient Cyprus, my area of research expertise as Wendy outlined, and these have not been on display before. But before we hone in on some specific artefacts that have been put on display, a little more on the road that led us to today. I'm just trying to click through to the next slide, but I don't think it's letting me do it. Ah, here we go, wonderful. Okay, so from conversations with Carolyn and Ken over the past few years, it has been clear that the Egypt Centre was keen to install an exhibition that somehow showcased their classical collection. This is some 300 or so artefacts that were not Egyptological. The rationale was always clear to engage wider audiences to evolve the museum and to engage with staff and students based at the university and strengthen our collaborations beyond our um, sort of community. The paper that I gave as part of the 2020 Wonderful Things Conference introduced the audience um, to the Cypriot artifacts that the museum housed, as indicated by this tweet on the slide. The talk also ended with a poll for the audience to take, and this featured pointed questions about our ideas, about how to really kickstart getting these objects on display in the museum itself. And in true Egypt Centre style, this work really does have strong elements of co-production and takes into account local and global audiences and their opinions and their feedback to drive these types of initiatives. It is bottom up in its practice, which is always to its credit. The poll yielded overwhelming results. And based on this, we applied for and secured a public engagement in award from the Institute of Classical Studies based in London. And the detail, details of this are well documented on our various social media platforms. By this time, that's come September 2020, 
Uh, we had a rough idea of what the case might look like and how it might be arranged. I move that there, you can see that. The pandemic brought considerable challenges, but Ken, Carolyn and the team worked tireless, tirelessly around the clock over the year to ensure that the installation came together and that progress was steady. This involved working on the interpretation panel, creating labels, as you can see here, ensuring that they had Welsh translations and clear details for, in, for visitors to view when they would engage with the case for the first time. It also involved experimenting with stands for different artifacts. And you can see that here from this figure in the center, which is from Boeotia, um, which had to have some adjustments made to the stand so that it could be showed at its best um, in, in, in the best way possible. This also involved working out different arrangements for the subgroups that were featured um, in the case as is shown by the final image on this screen. As the museum was closed and I had to work from home, we kept in regular contact as a team, sharing images, texts and ideas to ensure that the work kept um, to time and that we could launch it as part of today's proceedings. And here is the display case in its entirety. The image on the left of the screen, or at least on my left of the screen, shows you what the case looks like from the entrance um, of the uh, House of Life um, gallery. It really is a striking display as soon as you enter the room, particularly with the lighting that comes down from the top. And you can see some of the taller images, particularly the bust um, it, it, at the far corner, which is really quite arresting. And then you have um, the image right in front of you, face on, on the right of the screen, which shows you the arrangement of the display with labels and the interpretation panel at the top as well. What is really wonderful about this um, case itself is that it brings together a collection of um, artifacts from different cultures, different geographical regions in a really coherent manner. And the groupings themselves really present quite wonderful talking points, not just for our stu students, but for school visitors and for different audiences that might engage with it online or, with, or in the museum themselves. So this will include things like thinking about how Egypt enjoyed different networks immediately as part of its environs or with the Near East, with the central um, Mediterranean and beyond with Greece and Rome as well. The objects themselves reflect the use of different languages, interpretations of the human body, responses to power, the use of currency, ritual practices and general consumption patterns, all of which highlight their differences, similarities and modes of exchange. So this is really something that is what we want to really showcase about our teaching here at Swansea, but also the work that the Egypt Centre does, thinking about um, the material legacy of its artefacts um, beyond Egypt itself. On the actual display case, you can see there is a QR code sticker on the side which means that a visitor can take a photograph on their phones and they'll then be able to access the objects on the museum's catalogue. This is something that you can all do now using the image on the PowerPoint as well. So again, a wonderful um, application for teaching um, in and out of classrooms. This function also presents many opportunities for us to develop dynamic and varied content for visitors and students alike online. We are now in the process of developing a range of educational resources based on continued research of the collection and engagement with various groups to enhance the content offered on the catalogue and the website. So if you are interested, please do follow our story so far. You can find various links to blogs there. Please contact us. There's my email on the PowerPoint because we are always keen to hear back from you with your feedback and ideas about how to develop our initiatives. But now as a treat, I'm going to hand over to Ken, who is in the gallery, I think, and he's going to be able to show some of the artifacts um, in the display case and give a little bit of an introduction to how um, the first interactions have happened with the, um, with the display. Hello, everyone. As Erson says, I've teleported myself into the gallery, uh, directly in front of the new case, the Egypt and its neighbours one. Let me just flip my camera so that I can show people the case itself. 
As Erson says, one of the first things that we had to do was an interpretation panel, uh, given the name of the case, the Egypt and its neighbours. Uh, all our labels are in Welsh as well as uh, in English as well as Welsh. Uh, right from the very beginning in 1971, this was one of the conditions that we did have uh, both English and Welsh, even before the Welsh government uh, brought that into effect. The layout that Erson showed in terms of the plan of the case didn't quite work out in, in terms of how I wanted it to be. When I'd initially put that plan together, it was in lockdown and I didn't have access to the museum. So I didn't have the exact measurements for the case. And so I was really trying to, oh, um, really trying to kind of guess what the size of the, the case would be. So what I'm gonna do is just show you a few, because I know I've only got a couple of minutes, a, a few of the shelves that we've got here. At the top, we have objects related to Egypt. Let me try and get this the right way. Uh, in the center, we have this stele, and it's another cast. So it's not the original object, but it's extremely important uh, as it is one that was produced in 19, uh, 1932 of one that was found in, uh, in Palestine in 1929. And it depicts a God called Mechel. This is actually the only representation. Uh, I'm just gonna stop a second. I think people can't see properly because Erson's slides are still up. If you're there, Erson, maybe you can stop sharing your screen. Is that right? Or is it, yeah, is that better? All okay? That's okay, great, great. Okay, so there's, the, there's the, the top shelf that we have on the left-hand side, which is objects relating to, to Egypt. We have some foreign, f foreigners who are represented on these tiles, which are well known from the Ramesside period. The cast of the stele depicting the, uh, the god Mechel, uh, not an Egyptian deity, but as you can clearly see from his appearance, uh, also not very Egyptian, but the hieroglyphs that we have there as well as the individuals on the right hand side are Egyptian. So it's really showing this mixture of uh, different cultures. On the upper right hand side, we have objects related to Rome, including these very nice oil lamps and this unidentified figure that we have in the center, which is really wonderful and has been studied by one of our excellent volunteers and students, uh, a student uh, for his master's um, class, uh, Jack Brooker, several years ago. We have some coins of the Roman emperors. And then further on down, because we had so many nice things from Greece, I had to put two shelves relating to uh, the, the objects from Greece and the surrounding regions. The figures that were mentioned earlier by Erson from Boeotia. And of course, it seems everyone likes animals. So here's a few, a few uh, animals that we have there, figurines. And again, down at the bottom where we have our objects relating to Cyprus, this very nice horse, which comes from the Chesnola uh, collection and was purchased by Henry Welcome in the 1920s. A lot of these objects we can trace back to the collector. So for example, the two figures from Boeotia, they come from the Weber collection, which Welcome purchased in 1919. We have objects relating to the Near East, including this uh, cuneiform brick with the name of uh, Urnamu, dating to around uh, 2100 BC. And we even have a South Arabian fragment of a stele, which was published by Ken Kitchen, given the name of the individual. Some coins from the Parthian period. And then down at the bottom, we have objects relating to Nubia. Nubia has featured quite a bit over the, the, the past few days, particularly in relation to Meroe. And certainly these objects, almost all, if not all of them, are coming from Meroe. Some tiles that were found under the temple of a moon at Meroe by Garstang. Uh, we have this nice vessel, which even has the tomb number. And then this false, uh, th this uh, uh, offering table, which still has the excavation number. It was found in tomb 307 uh, in, uh, at Meroe during the, the, the 1910 season, hence the M10. At the same time, we also have this nice Meroitic inscription. And on the far left hand side, we have this very beautifully um, uh, decorated brick, which is coming from the palace at Susa. So that's just a quick 
skim through the objects that we have on display. I know that we have to move on as time is running out and let what, I don't even know what time it is. I'm dead on four o'clock, so I'm going to stop now and we'll pass on to the next person and I'll quickly get down to my room. To watch well, thank it. you, thank, thank you, thank you very thank much. Thank you to Erson, of course, for a plan for this funding, getting the funding and for uh, especially the classical studies um, public Engagement Award, uh, the, the Institute of Classical Studies Public Engagement Award uh, for funding this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. And thank you so much, Ursin, for that interesting talk, highlighting the collaboration between our academic uh, lecturers, the museum staff, and of course, our volunteers and our audiences. So thank you.